what's going on everybody welcome back to another episode of over the boards back to back weeks we're on a streak again boys how's everybody doing sorry to work playoff time for everybody yeah. what are ways doing the playoffs it's great yes yes playoffs around the corner everywhere we look some people getting into it a little bit earlier than others but uh but how's the week been, Scarata? What have you been up to this past week since the last show? Uh, it's been nice and warm, which has been great. Except uh, the, the weather tried to kill us today by throwing tornadoes our way, so that was awesome. But other than that, we've been pretty good. Like actual tornadoes today? Yeah, there was a tornado probably 10, 15 miles south where I am. So Damn, bro. Yeah. Wow, yeah. I hope everybody's Sirens okay. going off and everything. That's yeah, scary. I think it was mostly over like farmland, so nothing really crazy happened. Okay, okay, well that's good. That's good to hear. And uh, RTC, how about yourself, buddy? Uh, not playing. Nothing new. Uh, same old, same old. Um, I got a quote to get a back staircase poured for concrete off the back of my house. That was uh. The most most exciting thing. That's about it. How you Over been? or under what your expectation was? Mm, slightly over. Okay. Nothing egregious. Okay. Friend Were you having to use a trampoline to get in the house before? <laughs> No, I so <laughs> yeah, this house you, just, you gotta take a run up to get through the back door. <laughs> no, I do have an egress window right here though. I I occasionally pop out of. Um but no, I had this house built and they they put a back door on it and they wanted an extra ten grand for this shit deck that didn't even have a staircase off the back and I have two dogs, you know, so I need a staircase so that they can go about the yard. I got a pretty big, you know, lot and everything. Um, I want my dogs to run around the backyard. But, so they put the door in. I was like, all right, well, I don't want the, the deck. Can you just put some stairs on just to get me through for a little bit? And they're like, nah. We're going to put up this baby gate and screw it into the frame so that way you can't fall out the door. I'm like, so you won't put stairs on, but you'll put that on. They're like, yep. Sick. So I went out and I got RV stairs. You know what I mean? Like, just those collapsible yeah, yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah. And I just put them up there. So that's what we've been working with for the last, since November. And uh, now that summer's here, I could finally actually do something with it. Yeah, it's time now. It's time. It is. It's How time. high up is it? Uh, three feet. Yeah. Not high enough so to 30, slide so, in. That's so one, one meter, I think you would say? Yeah, definitely not. No. Maybe put it or like a table. or like a stripper pole or anything whoa, like, whoa, can't like fireman down it or like whatever you know. I, I mean. Why can't it be a fireman pole, bro? Why does it have to be a stripper pole? <laughs> you know, I have a past. I don't really want to talk about. <laughs> and, uh... What do you What do you think the firemen use it for in their spare time? Yeah, that's right. Right, right. <laughs> magic <laughs> Mike. Magic Mike comes in. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Ben? I'm good, no. boys. I'm good. I had a. Uh... I had to travel up to Sudbury this week for work, and what a fucking hike that is, boys. Fuck, four and a half hour drive to get up there for like a three day show or three hour show the next day and then drive all the way back. It was, uh, it was a long couple days, and now just trying to catch up on work. Just fuck, it's busy, boys. It's busy, but good week. The team, the team had a good, strong week this week. So I was happy to see that leading into playoffs and, uh, looking forward to the weekend. That's for sure. Just, uh, Nothing really on the go this weekend, which is kind of nice. First weekend in a long time, so looking forward to this one for sure. For see sure. Luke Combs tomorrow. Oh, sick! I saw him. Oh, yeah. I sent him before. He's great, man. Yeah, yeah. I saw him back I'm not going June. to see any of like the prelim people or anything. I'm just going to see him. But it's in the Bill Stadium, which is an outdoor stadium. Like it's not covered, so it's yeah. it's like 50 in rain. Yeah, buddy. It's uh, like like the weather's supposed to get like cold again, eh? Like for a yeah. Bit. Yeah. yeah, seen him in Edmonton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I saw. Yeah, and I saw him in Oshawa. He came in Oshawa when he first started off, but he was great. He's got pipes, man. He can, he can, he can rock it. He can rock it. Why wouldn't you? Why? Why don't you want to go see the uh, the opening acts? 
lot of shit to do that day, and I live like an hour away from the stadium, so it's just it's it's too much. Who is you're it? gonna be missing? Uh, honestly, I I've never heard of if that it's ever. if it's still who he was touring with when he was here in Saint when he played at Bush in June, it's Laney Wilson and Riley Green. That's what Duchesne is back. Was I would be there, too. and I would have gotten <laughs> way better fucking seats than I got. <laughs> Uh, let's, let's take a look at this. I'm curious. Because Riley Green was good. I like him a lot. Laney Wilson's pretty sick, too, isn't she? Which Laney Wilson was good, too. a jumper, dude. <laughs> oh, bro. Stripper poles, Laney Wilson's ass. Yo, you're it's on it today, hey, bro? You're I mean, it's, 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 930, it's 930 at night, like, you know. Yeah. After dark. Okay. <laughs> Holy fuck, buds. <laughs> Way to way to kick us off. Way to fire this uh, one up. Yeah. Let's see here. Tomorrow you said it is. The fuck? Yeah. Let's see here. Let's see. Why don't I see this? Why can't I find this this uh this concert? Oh come on, Kahuna. Where where are you going to see? Is Orchard Park? Yeah. That's what the Bill Stadium's called? That's the town that it's in. Oh, okay, okay, okay. The Abbott brothers, Charles Wesley, Godwin, Haley Witters, and the Blue Wilder Blue. I've never now. I have no idea. Who knows? Maybe the Saturday the Abbott brothers, but right Saturday there, Jordan Davis, Mitchell T. Tim Penny, Drew Parker, Colby Acuff. Yeah, I don't know any of those. Those guys. are all yeah. the openers. There's, there's, uh, what it's four or five? Different. Yeah, four or five for Friday, and then four for Saturday. It's a festival. So different. Yeah. Festival. Nice. Right. Yeah. right on. Well, enjoy that, RTC, because we're not probably going to talk you. after this until you're you're back from that concert. So I hope you have a fun time. I hope you're safe, and I hope you make it back okay. And I hope you get tons of selfies in the in the crowd, and do whatever you want to do. I hope you're wearing the, some some flannel when you go to to just you know blend in with everybody. The so. Same shirt. Good. It's always good to wear it down first before you yeah. have a country show because it looks way even right. more country when you go. But right, I'll spill like six bush lights on me on a belt buckle, right? Like in holsters. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Anyways, all right, let's get out of here. Oh, this is starting off right today. Yeah. Is, today is really getting off to a good start, but uh. <laughs> We're going to talk a lot about playoffs today, right? We're going to talk a lot about playoffs today. And playoffs are around the corner for everywhere. And we're starting with the NHL, right? As we always do, we talk about the real-life NHL to kick off this show. And they will start playoffs on Saturday. On Saturday. Now, the Eastern Conference matchups are set. The Western Conference, there's two games tonight to decide who gets that final wild card spot or who's going to be third seed in that pacific division and that's the vegas golden knights and the la kings and tonight they are both playing very winnable games so it could easily not move at all uh kings are playing chicago and the golden knights are playing anaheim so but yeah so before we just get into like the matchups for the nhl the one thing i want to say so we talked about it i think when we kicked off this show initially and it was the the Austin Matthews scoring just a mass amount of goals. I think we talked. We we're like, he could get 80. He could get 80. Didn't get 70. Finishes with yeah, 69, 69 goals. Hilarious. Nice. That's hilarious. Um, doesn't get there. And honestly, guys, like, I, I'm going to kick this show off in a bad, bad spot. Because I know we have a lot of Toronto fans that hang out here and, and watch the show. And guess what? I cannot believe last night I'm watching this game because they're playing the Bolts last night, right? And the Bolts are like, hey, if he gets it, he gets it. But we're not going to let him score, right? We don't want to be that team that gets put in the history book as the guys that love that 70th goal. But, like, the media here was fucking insane. Like, at one point, the commentator's talking about, who cares about the scoreboard? Get Matthews' 70th goal. It's like... You're on a fucking four-game losing streak going into your first round of playoffs. Maybe focus on trying to fucking win a game. Maybe be a little bit worried that you're losing the shitter teams before you go into playoffs. And I see you reacting, RTC, but I'm dead serious. That is not what you want to do going into the loss. And then 
even still on the power play, they're putting fucking circles around Matthews and following along around the ice. It was just the Matthews show for the last fucking week of hockey. Brody scores a fucking goal from the point, and Matthews looks pissed off that he scored. <laughs> even Tavares scored at the end of the game. They were all like, Ugh. right? It was weird because they scored what like three goals in the final eight, two or three goals in the final like five or six minutes. And Matt, Matthews was like this close to both of them because he almost got yeah. a tip on the Brody goal. And then, uh, I, I mean, you could have argued that, uh, you know, Tavares could have like tried to hit his stick with the other goal and deflected it in. But like, it's a one time or what you got to do on that. But like, yeah, I listen, I'm all for personal accolades. And I think they're really cool when people get them. But like, that's not the objective. And backup goaltender or not like if you're shipping six goals to a team that you may eventually see in the playoffs who you probably have a, a good chance to play in the playoffs at some point like that's not good like you, there's there's got to be an alarm bell going off somewhere and i'm sure the conversation locker room after the game was hey you know we didn't get him as 70 right but at the same time, we didn't play great hockey the first 40 minutes of the game. You so even talked about the game, like how they played. I bet you everybody in that locker room went by Matthews, tapped him on the fucking pads and said, sorry, we couldn't do it for you, bud. Sorry, we couldn't do it for you. They don't give a shit about the win or how they played. Yeah. Sorry, we couldn't get you 70. I can guarantee you almost every guy in that locker room gave him the tap and said that. Yeah, Again, I can understand that. But at the same time, if you're the head coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs, you got to be like... Okay, we tried, guys, right? But now we got to get our heads screwed on because here in two days, well, three days at the time, right? We got to head up, head down to Boston in a place that's been a meat grinder for us the last seven, eight, ten years and play a seven game playoff series against the team that literally has had our number the past two decades. Right. So. You got to reset uh, There now. needs to be, yeah, four there needs to be a streak. switch They lost flip. a New Jersey in those four games. Yeah. yeah. And then they lost to Florida and Tampa Bay, who both could be teams they see. it. Well, one of those teams, if they make it through, will be one of the teams they meet in the second round. Yeah. Right? So, and RTC, I know a little bit of body language there when I was talking. Let's hear, what, what's your thoughts? What's your thoughts on all, all this stuff? I, I mean, I, first off, you're 100% correct. I was just going to chime in and just be like, oh, well, it's better to get them out now. You know, but no, you're absolutely right. You don't want to go into the playoffs not hot. But, you know, it almost does make you wonder, you know, like, you shut down Matthews, is that really all it takes? Is that all it takes to beat the fucking Maple Leafs? Like, you have tons of star players there, you know? Like, shouldn't it just be one guy? But, I mean, we'll see. They say the greatest rivalry in all of sports is the Maple Leafs in the first round. So, I'm here for <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the Eastern Conference is set pretty good. There's not much more we could ask for here, guys. Like, our first-round matchups, and I think, I think um, you know, from a prediction standpoint, we don't necessarily have to do predictions today. Just maybe, like, talk about maybe which one excites us the most. But, like, you got the two teams in Florida playing each other. Tampa Bay and the Florida Panthers uh, are going to be meeting here in the first, the first round. That's exciting. You got the Leafs in Boston. Obviously, lots of history there. That's exciting. Now, the other division, you got the Rangers and uh, Washington who are going to meet up. And then Carolina and the Islanders. Maybe not as exciting, I would say, potentially. But yeah. do you guys have a favorite matchup here? Any thoughts here in the Eastern first round? It's hard to go with Toronto and Boston. If 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 I had to just to break the mold, my number two is easily the Caps and um, Rangers. Just because you know, I I just want to keep seeing Ovi get goals. Yeah, yeah. you know, respect it. Um, but yeah, Toronto and Boston, no matter what, all of sports is going to be better because either of those teams losing is good for all of us. <laughs> so let's go. I love. Yeah, that. I mean, in terms of series to watch. I've got a bunch of buddies who live up in up in that area, Mass, Delaware kind of 
Connecticut, Rhode Island area, and they are fired up. I mean, there is a fire lit under that entire city just knowing that they get to play the Maple Leafs. And I think that's that kind of plays into it a little bit. And I, I want to touch on the Florida Tampa series a little bit because I think there's this thing going on where Tampa's been there. They've done it, right? They did it so many years in a row. And Florida got there last year, came up short. So now we're going to see, okay, the team that's been there and done it against the team that just came up short. But I think we're kind of meeting at that point of the trajectory where, okay, Tampa's starting to taper off a little bit. You got Kucherov starting to come into his later years. You got a lot of that core. I mean, Braden Point's still probably in his prime. Hard to say that he's not. I think he's only like, what, Pretty 30? hard to say that Cooch isn't in his prime still either. The guy is going to lead the league. Oh, in I, trust me. I'm well aware. But, I mean, is he, is he going to put up 140-something points here in three, four years? Oh, no, God. May, who knows, exactly. actually? Maybe. maybe uh, well, yeah, offense, I mean, hey, shit. hey, who knows, right? Uh, but, you know, and it seems like Florida is right in their ascendancy of – perennial cup contenders and last year was kind of the first year they put everybody on guard um so yeah i think this is kind of uh old school versus the new kids on the block series add to it the fact that they're you know cross-state rivals yeah just I makes like it 10 it. times better i like it i love it i love it obviously toronto boston especially with like just in general, man, like that's that's the yeah, matchup right. I think all across the NHL that everyone's going to pay the most attention to. And remember, Boston brings in Patty Maroon, right? Patty Maroon loves playing that yeah. Maple Leaf team, dude. And maybe we get to see him and Revo go at it, which would be fucking sweet. But it would be funny. The Heat, like, it's going to be a crazy series. But again, obviously, I'm a Tampa fan. The Florida Tampa series, I'm super excited about. And I love your point, right? Like, it's almost like, yeah, the new kids, the the guys that have been around. But I bet you they're, they're kind of at the same level now with, like, their experience. I remember when Tampa Bay went on that that run, the, the season uh, that they won their their cup the first time there. Um, they, they got swept, right? They got swept by Columbus the season before, right? And Bobrovsky yeah. was yeah. the goalie in Columbus at the time, right? Yeah, oh, He's ready yeah. to fucking go, buddy. Yeah. He's a playoff performer. I think that's going to be a really, really good series. And I honestly, I think, I don't know. I, I like, I like um, RTC. I love the idea of like Ovechkin getting more goals and the Caps turned it on later in the season and made a big comeback here to get that playoffs spot and did what they had to do to hold on to it because it was fucking tight at the end. But, I just don't. See, I don't see it on. Last. Yeah, I just. Don't yeah, see no, I, I don't. Yeah, no, I. And, I agree. I just hope that he gets two more goals, and I'll be happy. But I'll you say, know, I think they have a better chance of beating the Rangers than the Islanders have of beating the Hurricanes. Yeah. That Hurricanes team is very, very, very good. Oh, dude, he's good, dude. Rod Brindamore is a stud of a coach. He was a great player. Fucking yes. great coach. I mean, he just works them guys. Aho is nasty too. Yeah, oh yeah, gross. They make great deadline yeah. moves. They're like, yeah, and you'd run through a wall for Brendan Moore, right? He's just like that kind of yeah. coach, right? Like, oh yeah, he's all in with the boys, right? But when Jake Gensel hasn't missed a step since going there, I mean, that dude is what he scored like six goals in his first four games or something stupid like that. I mean, oh. Uh... Yeah, they got the right guys. You know what I mean? They when they made those yeah. deadline rooms, they got the right guys in there. And I love it. I love it. I think they're gonna yeah. be a dangerous team. And um yeah, like I said, you make moves like that and you start you keep winning, it's it's a good sign leading into playoffs, right? So um Western Conference here, like we said, right? So Vegas Golden Knights and Kings still have a game tonight to determine where they seed. But as of today, and if it doesn't change. Uh, the Dallas Stars would play the Kings. Uh, the Jets are going to play the Avalanche. The Canucks would play the Predators. And the Oilers would play the Golden Knights. Now, if it does switch, the Oilers would play the Kings. And the Stars would play the Golden Knights. Now, I don't think as the Stars, I don't think I want to play the Golden Knights in the first round. Because I heard uh, Mr. Uh, Mark Stone might be uh, skating around, getting ready to play, by the way. But no, his spleen's still ruptured. 
I heard he was skating around, getting ready to play. What? Who would have thought? I well, heard, that's crazy. I heard he's been hitting some golf balls some places too. I've heard a little bit of that as well. Hey, it's maybe he's getting some of that uh, that soccer magic spray, boys. Hey, eh? just a little. Pss, 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 you're ready to go. Here they come. Here come the Golden Knights. But um, horse tranquilizers. Yeah, matchup wise, boys. What are your anything that catches your eye here in the Western? Okay. Who the Golden Knights play? Whether it's Edmonton or um, fucking Dallas, I'm there for it. I think either of those series, whoever they match up against, is going to be phenomenal. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I have to do that because it's not like, oh, we don't know which series, so we can't really elaborate on it. But like, right. oh. I think this is going to be one of the rare occasions where, because I think in the last three, four years, it's been crazy hype around the first round series. And we get to the second round and we're like, these matchups aren't as spicy as what it was before. I think in the Western Conference this year, that's not going to be the case anymore. Because, I mean, you see, you know, say Dallas takes care of business, beats the Kings, and then... Whoever comes out of the Jets and Avalanche series, personally, I think Colorado gets through that. Boy, we've got immovable object against the unstoppable force against in Dallas and Colorado. That is going to be an absolute fireworks show of a series. Did you know that the Winnipeg Jets won the season series, swept the season series against Colorado this season? I did. Yeah. They've won seven on the bounce as well. Yeah, I, I I remember seeing that, and I'm like, I think there was a game, too, where Hellebuck made, like, 52 saves. Because Colorado's shot volume, I think they lead the league in shots. And I don't think it's close. Like, I, I, I would look, I can look that up real quick, but, I like, I remember seeing a stat, and it was probably about a month ago, just talking about, like, offensive output of, of teams, and, like, if Colorado, if you're a player wearing a, a blue and maroon jersey and you don't have an option, they just throw it in that. And when you get guys like McKinnon and McCarr and Ranton, and I mean, like, uh, th- you can't do much about it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's ridiculous. They can score from so many different spots. And uh, actually, they, they lead. Western, hold on. They lead the Western Conference in goals. Yep. With a game still to play, the next closest team to them was the Dallas Stars, who scored a goal less than them. So Colorado has a chance to just to extend that advantage, become the are they gonna be the only team? No, the Maple Leafs also hit three hundred. So there you go. So one of two teams to hit three hundred goals this season. Yeah. Which is just nuts. So you know what I think of like, uh, sorry RTC. Is there is there is there a matchup that you look forward to the most? Best. Just yeah, or just whoever yeah, Dallas it's... plays. Yeah, well, no, just whoever Vegas plays. Vegas plays. Okay, cool. Yeah. Now, the, so the one thing I was gonna say though is like the Eastern Conference. It's like you know what the Rangers, the Hurricanes. They're they're big dogs, right? Like we think of them, they're gonna be superior to their their matchups. I don't know if I see that in this Western, right? And that's, I think that's to your point, right? Like, I think it's going to be a dog fight the whole way through. I think all these teams are very, very comparable. There's not like one team that I'd be like, they'll win that series 100%. Yeah, it's going to be sweaty over there. Yeah, I mean, really, well, we the only... Wanna, we don't... Go ahead, sorry. No, I was going to say, the only series that I'm like that is with the Dallas and, and LA series. But if that turns into a Dallas-Vegas series... Then I'm back interested because who knows what you know show tricks the Vegas Golden Knights living on the strip are going to pull out of their hat. So I I I could easily see Dallas struggle in that series. I'm gonna be completely honest. I think Dallas may find themselves on the wrong side of things if they end up playing Vegas. Yeah. So I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. Um, while we're on the Western Conference and before we move to our league, 
we are going to be saying hello to a new team in the NHL. And at the same time, we will be saying goodbye to a team that has been fought to be staying around for about as long as they possibly could. And I know, uh, I don't know if anyone saw like uh, Bissonette talking about his Arizona slash Phoenix Coyotes and his experience and how much he thanks that organization for getting him to where he is today because he wouldn't be there if it wasn't for them. And, you know, he got choked up a little bit about it. And, you know, it is it is a little bit sad to see them go. Uh, Phoenix Coyotes was actually the first NHL game I ever saw was the Leafs and the Phoenix Coyotes at Maple Leaf Gardens. It was my first NHL game that I ever went to. Um, but it wasn't going to work. It just it just it just wasn't going to work, unfortunately. And it seems like this would the, the exit here is 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 a pretty, pretty nasty one, too. Like, really, like everyone's kind of just all of a sudden we're done. We're gone. See ya. Yeah, I think everybody was a little shocked at how abrupt it was. I think everybody saw the storm clouds kind of in the distance, mm-hmm. but nobody really saw how fast they were they were getting here. Um, I think it's having lost a professional sports team before. It is the next morning is literally the worst. It is the worst because you just feel this weird emptiness. Where you're just like, okay, now what do we do? Yeah. Sure. And, but I think at the same time, I don't think it's the fact that hockey wasn't going to work in Arizona. I don't think that ownership group was ever going to work in Arizona. And I think the unwillingness of the ownership group just move on from the team, let someone else who had interest in keeping hockey in Arizona take over the team, ultimately prevailed and now we're in this situation where there are no owners who want to step in and keep the team in Arizona. Everybody wants to move the team either to Houston, Atlanta, uh, uh, Quebec city or, or evidently salt Lake. So yeah, I, I can definitely sympathize with all the, all the coyotes fans out there for sure. Um, it's, it's not fun. And I'm very, I'm almost a little skeptical to see how this is going to go. Um, from what I'm reading, from what I'm seeing, they don't exactly have a home, so to speak. It's more of a temporary kind of fix. The Delta Center isn't made for hockey. They're going to have to do a lot of work to get it ready for hockey. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying that they can't get it done. I'm not saying it's not going to go well, but. Um, I think it's a very, a very interesting move. Yeah, it'll be to interesting. Go to Salt Lake goes, for sure. Yeah. RTC, any, uh, any uh, thoughts on on the Arizona Coyotes leaving the league? It's sad to see whenever you see like you know a classic team like that go, you know. But I mean, I wasn't exactly shocked. You're only going to settle for terribleness for so long, you know. And like, obviously, I, you know, I live in New York, so. You know, I'm not too familiar with, you know, the West Coast fandom, if you will. But, like, I don't see a lot of people, like, rocking any Phoenix stuff. Like, I see them rocking Kings and, you know, San Jose and, you know, what the Knights, all that stuff here. But, like, nobody's rocking Phoenix. And if they are, it's just because of the logo. It's not because of the actual team. Yeah, it's always the throwback logo. Right, was right. Gonna, and was it was say, dope, Yeah. You know, definitely a I dope, s- you know, thing. But... Mm-hmm. I see more people outside of Arizona rocking the Kachina than I do <laughs> probably inside the state. So yeah, it's just, it's fashion, bro. That's a good fashion statement. But I oh, mean, yeah. remember when they were in playoffs last though, and they, the whiteouts they were doing, it was pretty cool, man. Like, Oh yeah. They, they oh rallied. yeah. I mean, but when the best thing about your team is your sweaters, it's only going to carry you Agreed. so far. Agreed. Yeah. You and know, I, I think that's a great point, man. hundred percent. Yeah. I think the first thing you think of when you think about that team. Yeah, I think it's interesting too that the uh, the the Diamondbacks came out today and kind of put out a statement, basically saying, "Hey, you know, we want the city to kind of come together at at this time and not really be too down on themselves." And I mean, you know, the Diamondbacks Diamondbacks games—that's what they're doing. Well, yeah, but I mean, yeah. 
I, but they don't need to do that. I mean, the Diamondbacks are a really good team right now. They made the World Series last year. I mean, you know, it's not like they're hurting for fans. Um, and, you know, the Arizona Cardinals pull really well when they're not tanking and Kyler Murray's not playing COD every night. Um, gotta get him but, you know, list. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I a sad day for Coyotes fans, but it's probably at the end of the day a move that just it was inevitable. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, all right, all right. That's uh, NHL. So, guys, this is what I was thinking too. So, NHL.com has like this bracket challenge thing we can set up. I was thinking I was gonna uh, I'm gonna set one up and I'll just fire it in the Discord there and see how many people will join and we just keep track yeah. of it as we go through it. I think that'll be fun. So, I'll fire that in. That's why I said we don't do our predictions today. We can do it on there. There you go. All right, all right. Let's move into the reason we're here. We talk about our league. The LG HL. And here we go. NHL, AHL, ECHL. We are moving into the final week. Last week, we went through and picked who we thought our president's trophy winners were going to be. And we also talked about the stat leaders. We talked about in previous show, like who we think is going to be in, who we think is going to be out. This week, I think we do the same thing. Not President's Trophy winner. Let's just take a look, see where we stand today. Who's going to be in? Who's going to be out? Um, take a quick gander. Quick gander. We're not going to change our picks on who's 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 leading the stats. One week left. Um, then we'll get into the CHL. We'll get into the CHL, do some uh, predictions. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about the NCAA, too, because they changed their, uh, their playoff format. And we'll talk a little bit about that as well. But... Starting off, as we always do, we'll talk about the big league first, and that's the LGHL. LGHL moving into the final week here. Before we get into the standings, any notes from the boys from, from last week from uh, the NHL? Oh, he's muted. Who's muted? I thought RTC was muted. I, thought was, I saw his mouth move, and then he... He didn't speak. Oh, yeah, I uh, I mean, I, I, it just there we go. Are you? Yeah, are, you are we good? Yeah. Are we live? All right, we're live. We're doing this. All well, right, you've been live the whole time, guy. Is this right. thing on. No, I know. <laughs> no, I, I. It's tough, you know. Like, I feel like the end has just been locked in for you know a few weeks now. Like we knew those bottom teams and everything. Um, I did see a few call ups. Um. You know, which was weird, um, but whatever. You're going to have that at this point, I guess. Um, I'm definitely excited to see how their playoffs shake up. Yeah, Calgary's still taking their lickings. They're playing oh, games. Man. They're getting oh. smoked. Oh. 16 losses in a row now. They've hit 16 yeah, in a row. <laughs> Struggling there. Uh, and then one of the call-ups RTC that you mentioned, I, I don't know how many there were. One of them was uh, to Philadelphia, I believe. Somebody on the Philadelphia Flyers broke some fingers or something like that, not able to play anymore. So they had to call somebody up from the Lehigh Valley Phantoms, and the Lehigh Valley Phantoms had to call somebody up from Reading. And I think Reading's trying to figure out who the hell they're going to call up. Um, so it's a big trickle effect here, and that might be a CHL team impacted by that too, so who knows. Um, but yeah, it's unfortunate, especially at this time, leading into playoffs because with a successful organization where all the teams are going to be in playoffs and in a good spot in playoffs too. Right. Um, so yeah, I don't know what other call-ups there were, um, but yeah, no Calgary, Calgary on an absolute heater right now, but they are playing games guys. They are playing games. I just took a look. looks like maybe forfeited two games last week. Maybe I'm just going to double check. Yeah. Two forfeits last week. The rest were played. So they're trying. They're trying. It's got to be really hard to want to go play and get smoked in the NHL. Um, yeah, I think it was uh, it was Kevin Hockey that got called up. And I don't. I think Kevin Hockey's been in the end before. Let me let me look into this. Yeah, he's got a little bit of experience. He actually played for the Flyers last season in the end. Went nine six and four uh, with fifty points. So uh, not. It's certainly not hurting for uh, resources. Yeah. Uh, so unfortunate the way it happened. I think for um, for not only the Flyers but the whole entire organization. 
Um, but yeah, you know, I, I don't think that's a, a downgrade. I think if anything, it's a, a lateral move. Kevin Hockey is very serviceable guy and can get a job done. So. Yeah, no, I agree. It's just unfortunate, yeah. right? Like it's just unfortunate. Oh, to, thousand percent. Yeah. Pull out. But yeah, I, I guess the other thing too, is it's good to have a good farm system to be able to pull up from too. Right. So, yeah. You know, if that's a ECHL team or sorry, an AHL team that's way out of playoffs, doesn't have anybody that you really want to use. Yeah. Who knows, right. It turns into a little bit of a gong show. So the only the real thing question about me. that is if you call it from the AHL and they're out of playoffs, they don't necessarily need to call anyone up. Yeah. The ECHL, right. But the real question becomes, did the flyers quite literally have to place that player on IR? I think he had to, they had to probably ban him, didn't they? Oh, no. That's unfortunate. Well, I'm assuming they have to. They have to make a roster spot for him. They can't call somebody up if he's on IR. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. I, mean, I would assume players. ban, and then he could just easily appeal it. Mm-hmm. You know? That's true, yeah. 100%. Yeah, can they, 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 yeah, they had to ban him. 100%, you can appeal that. He'll be back next season as long as his fingers are all good. Yeah. Right? Like, as long as he wants to play. Oh. Like, you know what too is they just they traded for him at the deadline and then he put in an ir request his ir ran out and then he took the ban that sucks yeah it doesn't have that mark stone magic eh? oh, yeah, yeah. no it's no we need to get the the vegas uh uh medical team yeah. over to the flyers lg yeah. flyers and help them out a little bit there that that's gonna serve a per- like do you think there'd be value in this league having an LTIR. One LTIR spot. What would you use it? What would you use it for? Right this situation. Dude, he broke his I mean, by the time that his fingers are good to go, the season's gonna be over. Is he a player that they would resign? I don't know. Oh well when you go bring it like that as far as resigns. Maybe not this situation, but maybe there is one. That's fair. Maybe. I'm just saying, maybe, 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 huh? Hmm? I see where your head's at. I, I, so you don't have to ban the guy either. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, th- I actually wouldn't mind that. I, I think for existential crises, right? Like this. I, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of just browsing through his stats here, real quick. Um, 14, 9, and 4 in the end this season. Whatever, without points. facing, you know, the discipline of it. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. like not having life shit. Hey, dude, I was in the fucking hospital. I mean, first off, it's ridiculous that you have to provide medical documents or whatever to, like, <laughs> not do that, right? Like, yeah. But, you know. <clears throat> so maybe it's not the team that has LTIR. Maybe it's the league. Maybe the league, instead of just banning right. these guys just to accept them back again, maybe there's just an exceptional status that they can get right off the hop and just call it, like, no ban. Yeah. You move on. You don't play the rest of the season. Sign up next season. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It just it looks better. That's all. I know it's all it's all just visual stuff because who cares? He's gonna be back. There's gonna be nothing wrong. But like, yeah, just I don't know. Just getting a ban versus not getting a ban is is nice. Yeah, it just looks bad, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks bad when people are looking at your yeah. uh, your stat page and be like, oh, they took a ban. He must be toxic. It's being asked. Yeah, yeah. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. All right. Standings wise. My affiliation, my top dog leading the way in the Eastern Conference, the Carolina Hurricanes, take the top spot from the Isles GT team in a game last week on the last night. I think they played each other on the last night last week. Only two points now ahead of the Isles GT team. Um, The Canadians are in second place, 97 points. So Hurricanes, 99. Canadians, 97. Isles GT, 97. The Flyers, 92. The Panthers, 91. The Maple Leafs, 89. Devils Gaming, 88. And the Bruins, 85, holding that last spot. Now, the Bruins and Tampa Bay played each other last night, last week as well. Big win for Bruins. Big win for the Bruins. They get in. So, Tampa Bay sits outside. At 9 spot with 82 points. Sabres 10 spot, 79. I don't know if they can make up 6 points next week. They got a lot of... The Bruins had a lot of tough games next week, though. Do they? Lightning. Their night starts with 
New York Islanders, Pittsburgh Penguins, Carolina Hurricanes. Penguins suck. The Penguins aren't good, but those slat, those first and third teams are. Yeah. Then they got to play the Sabers, the Leafs, the Red Wings. Winnable games, I think. They have two games against the Sabers. They do play the Sabers twice. <laughs> Big games for the Sabers. Big. Oh games yeah. For the Sabers. Yeah. So I would say maybe they're not quite out yet then. They have an opportunity to make up for the six points against that team specifically. Yeah, they they finish out the season Florida, Ottawa. So center's already out. Florida's in. So. Okay. We'll see. Yeah, no, I think uh, that last spot's definitely up in the air. And I don't, uh, let's see what, uh, what Tampa's schedule is like here real quick. Uh. They've got New York Islanders on their schedule. Uh, Tampa has to play Florida as well. Uh, they've got to play Montreal and Buffalo. Here we go. Uh, Florida plays them again on Tuesday. They get a lick at Ottawa. They get uh, Detroit as well. So there could be a lot of moving parts here. I mean, eight, the eight, nine, and ten have an opportunity for eight spot. Outside of that, there's no change. I don't think nobody else. Uh, can yes. Yes. Nobody's gonna think, get move out. Devil yeah, I think. Yeah, you're looking at a monumental oh, collapse. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at a monumental collapse for Buffalo to get in, but we've seen crazier things, right? Sure, so. Sure. So. Okay. So yeah. So I think it's a big, big week, obviously, for Buffalo. I'm gonna say that big week for Buffalo. The other teams obviously yeah, but, have to do the oh. winning too. But Buffalo playing some big games, two against the Bruins, one against the Lightning, and they, those are must-wins if they want to make it. Yeah. Now, the Lightning, unfortunately, I don't think they play the Bruins again, so it kind of fates in both their teams' hands to see who makes it in. Lightning sitting, sitting three points out right now. Can make that up for sure, but not easy to do in the last week, man. It's just not. No. Especially when you see, like, well, the Lightning, they're playing caps right off the hop. Is Caps yeah. going to show up? We hope. They finally snapped that streak last week, thank God, but then finished their week off with a loss. Start a new one. Yeah, well, <laughs> they, won't, they won't catch the... Uh, they definitely won't catch the uh, Calgary Flames, that's for sure. No. But uh, I'm interested to see who finishes that one seed. It could be any of the top three teams right now. Hurricanes, Canadians, Isles. Isles and Canadians within two points of the Hurricanes. And the hurricane yeah. schedule this week is actually not terrible, man. Not terrible at all. They've got Detroit, Toronto, Boston, Devils, Pittsburgh, Isles GT again. Could be, could be a big game. Now, unfortunately, Scarada, that is the last game on Monday night. Yeah. They got Devils again, CBJ, and Flyers. Not a terrible week for these guys. Yeah, I mean, the Hurricanes team's gonna. I I think they hold on to this spot. Yeah, I I th I think with the way that Carolina's kind of going about their business lately, Man, I think I. Yeah. Canadians are kind of streaking, eight one one. The Habs are right there. Yeah, I. I think for that one spot, yeah, I, I think the race is certainly on, but from a divisional point of view, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. That's hot, that's fucking screaming hot. Fuck, boys, Isles have a pretty sweet schedule, too, man. It could be that Isles. Carolina game or the Isles Montreal game could be a big big one for those guys. Yeah. So look forward to following along with this this week. Um, Monday night hockey. If you're doing it, should be extremely fun. Yeah, I need to uh, need to figure out what I'm doing. I know for certain we're bringing the push back. That's gonna be a thing. Love that. Love that. Yep, need to yep. see if uh, if Monday Night Hockey will also proceed that week. Yeah, I'll see 
yeah, see what we'll I can make that out. We'll figure it out, buddy. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. Now, as we move over to the Western race, we got a new team on top. Scarada, yeah. we got a new team on top, buddy. We do have a new team on top, and it's the team that uh, the machine just keeps on running, doesn't it? As they have, they uh, had their shoes untied for the first week. They tied their shoes and started running back once more. Um, the Colorado Avalanche, seven game here, eight one and one in their last ten. Uh, find themselves two points clear of the Anaheim Ducks for the number one spot. And the Anaheim Ducks haven't done themselves any favors by going four, four, and two in their last ten. Uh, I I can't say that I'm overly surprised by Colorado taking the one spot. I think I am slightly surprised by the Ducks slipping in the way they have. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's one of those where the Ducks kind of slipped up at the end of last season, found themselves out of playoffs, I think, fairly early. Are we maybe getting a little bit of a repeat here? I don't know. Yeah, so they drop they dropped the game to Colorado last week, kick off the week. Yeah. Three two overtime. Great game. They lost to Ottawa though. That's just a game you can't lose. Yeah. Right? You just can't. If you're racing for a spot, you just you can't lose those ones. Um they smacked the wheels off that Buffalo team though, ten to two last week. So I mean both teams are really good, but yeah, I know the Colorado Avalanche, defending Stanley Cup champions, looking like the defending Stanley Cup champions. Um, in the Western Conferences, they sit at the top with 104. Ducks Gaming 102, just behind them. Then you got the separation, big separation here. You got 93 points for that three seed, which is the Oilers. The Preds at 90, Kings 90, Canucks 90, Stars 89, Blues 89 in that final eight seed, and then the Golden Knights sitting just outside with 85 points, so four points back. Then you have the Wild, 10 points back. So they're done. The only team that has a hope in hell to try to slide into this Western Conference is the Golden Knights, but they've got some points to make up. Now, there's going to be a ton of movement on seeding from the maybe three. I'm going to, I'm just going to call it four to eight. Yeah. 90 and 89 points for all the teams, right? So there's going to be a ton of movement next week on the seeding. So there's no point of figuring out who's going to be where in this in this, in this this uh, conference. Just follow along. We're going to have to find out. Yep. Yeah, that, that's going to be one that's that thick. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting, though, the Blues. I didn't realize that the Blues were going to slide in there. Because they just slid in yeah. there last week. Is that right? No, nah, they've been floating about. They've had a few nice little winning streaks here the back half of the season and they actually made some some pretty decent moves at the deadline too just not major moves but they they you know found his his crew uh with j rap and them just kind of solidifying things a little bit making sure they've got all the right guys that they want um and i think i think if i'm going to kind of put them anywhere i think it's going to depend as to who they get in the first round. I think if they get Colorado, it's going to be tough, right? But if they can slide into maybe, uh, you know, trying to get up against maybe a three or a four seed, whoever that ends up being, I think I give them a lot more of a chance. Um, And so this week's a big week for them. And they, you know, they, they don't have it easy. They play, uh, they do, I believe, get the Flames once. Uh, so, or no, they don't. That was uh, Colorado I was looking at. Uh, they get the Canucks, the Oilers, so a little bit in control of their own destiny here. Uh, the Sharks, who are already eliminated, they do play Colorado twice. Uh, Arizona, who I believe is already eliminated, yep. Uh, Chicago. They're eliminated from the whole league, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you see? Oh man. Um yeah, yeah. I mean lots to play for for the blues. Sure. Yeah. So I like that though. Like an eight seed that they can find their way into, you know, like a six, 
they they have a chance. But yeah, the first two, they're this is gonna be they'll be hard pressed there, right? Like, yeah, you gotta stay out of the way of the buzz saws. Yeah. Uh, anything else standing wise, gentlemen? RTC. No, I mean I, I I think you covered it. Like it, if there's anybody that's gonna do it, it's gonna be Golden Knights, and there this is going to be an absolute bloodbath this final week. It's going to be, I'm going to screenshot this and see exactly how much moves over this next week um, in standings. So for our next show, we can kind of go over it. It, it. It's awesome. This is what, you know, like we want to see. Like we don't want to see like seating locked in, you know, six weeks into the season. We want it to come down to the final night. And this entire, well, all right, not an entire conference, but most of this conference from three to eight, that's a one night swing. Easy. Yeah. Like, shit can get real fucking weird. And some of these teams that are on the bottom are streaking. Yeah, there's some one-period swings in there, too. You take a second period, you lead into the third period, and all of a sudden you cough up two goals, it swings the other way, then, you know, that could be costing one, two, three spots. Uh, interesting thing of note, uh, final game of the season for the Vegas Golden Knights, they host the Calgary Flames. So... Tack on two points to Vegas as we head into this week, bar something wild. Maybe. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, maybe Calgary just want to come out and, and cause problems. I don't know. I would. They may they may all just rock up with six defensive enforcer D man builds and and just put everybody into the bench. Who knows? Yep. Uh we talked about stats. Uh, last show, we'll get deep into it. We had our predictions on who we think we're going to lead after going into the final week here. Bandit has moved out of the top spot for points. He's moved into second with 78 points. But I don't know if it's Laffy or Luffy. I think it's Laffy, maybe. L-X-F-F-Y of the Montreal Canadiens has now taken over the lead at 79 points. Only one point ahead of Bandit, so we could see some movement there. Barzi, 77 points. Then we got Barube and Zachary, 75 and 74. Zachary only putting up like six points last week. That was my choice on who I thought was going to take it, but it's not over yet. There's still another week here, so we'll see who takes that. And I thought it'd be fun, guys, just you know, take a quick peek. <clears throat> and I knew what team it was going to be, but Sprangy. Of the Calgary Flames is leading the plus minus on the minus side at a minus 50 this season. Minus 50. With one week remaining. Not to be almost topped by Ali, his his teammate, who is 0-14-1 this season in the NHL. 0-14-1. Not a single win. So now it's like... I, 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 I wanted to see the minus leader, but now I'm more interested to see, can Ali get a win before the end of the season? I feel so and bad for that guy. Zero wins. Good for him, though, for sticking it out. Yeah. You know, like, not a lot of people are going to sit there and take that week after week. Not a lot of managers are going to hold on to a guy who's won zero games either for the whole season. It's Calgary, so they're probably just grateful that the motherfucker shows up, you know? <laughs> hey, buddy, you going to show up next week? Okay, we'll keep you. Right. Right. Yeah. You know? Um, it's tough, man. That's it's tough. tough. That's tough. Tough. His, his path this season has been an interesting one, and I remember kind of keeping an eye on him all season. So he started the season in the AHL with Cleveland, got traded to Rockford, got waived, claimed off waivers by the Iowa Wild, then sent to the Minnesota Wild, then got traded, and is here where he is now. So let's just say he's not supposed to be in the NHL. Let's just be real. Correct. I think we can say this about he's most here because of he got put the Calgary players. Fair. But he's here because he got put on a bad team. A bad team needs players, and that's where he is. Yes. Let me ask you this. How many, as a forward, is there a cap to you guys for how many giveaways is acceptable? Obviously, forwards are probably going to have more giveaways, you know, than defensemen. Like, what's that, like, 
you know, concern level, if you will. More than 14 per game. More than 14 a game. When I see double digits, if you have, I've always said the recipe to winning is to only have one forward that has double digit giveaways. Your defense cannot have double digit giveaways. Your forwards, you can't have two, two forwards with double digit giveaways in a good game, right? If you're playing some shitter team, it doesn't fucking matter. But my number would be 14. Anything over 14 is concerning in a game. Something's not working at that point. Now, if you're if you're going over 14 and you're putting up five points in a game, whatever. But 14, 14 would be my number. I think you're, <laughs> I think you're proving RTC's point here. So I think he's, you're referencing Barzy, my Mister Friend. Yeah, I mean, dude, that's a lot of fucking giveaways. Yeah, yeah. 387 like, giveaways. Also got 77 points, 18, three and three. You know, he's oh, winning, whatever, and he's, put, and he's third in the league in points, right? Like, you, what do right. you do? No, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, right. I mean, he also had three minutes and penalties, you know. Yeah. But again, winning. Three to seven looks like a lot, but that's just over sixteen a game. So yeah, just a bit over your fourteen that's number. Threshold, but yeah. again, if you're getting the return that uh, that you're having, don't think it really matters. No. If you're losing, it's an issue. If you're losing yes. games, it's like buddy, start moving the puck. Yeah. You're holding on to it a little too long, and it's not working. Yeah. But, anyways, anything else in NHL? Okay, we'll follow up pretty tight this week. We've got my show. We've got uh, some the push for sure coming up too. So we'll be, we'll be talking a lot more about the, these playoffs as we as the week progresses. All right, let's move over to the AHL. What notes do we have AHL wise before we move into the standings? Anything? So, while you guys are looking that up, one thing I want to say is, I think all-time monumental collapse has to be this season's Hartford Wolfpack. Oh, God. All-time LG monumental collapse in any league possible. These guys went from looking like absolute studs to being duds. They are terrible. They are terrible. They at one point they were like first in the league. Yeah. And that was only a couple weeks in. But how do you go from being that good to just that bad? I think they started the season on a heater. On a heater. I, I That's think what I mean. They had a huge winning streak. Yeah. Uh what was this? this? Six and three week one. Eight and one week two. Yeah, you know, four. What is this one? Two, three, five, and uh, five and four week three, and then the just the train derailed. And then it's done. Week four on, and then it's the gong show. Red everywhere. So I don't know. I don't know if they made all of the wrong trades. I I, but I think something went horribly wrong inside this team. I don't think it was coming from the outside because if you're going to be exploding that badly, something had to have happened. Yeah, I don't yeah. On the inside of this team. No, I don't think anybody knows what it is. Maybe Maybe somebody does. They certainly do. We need some we need some Hartford Wolfpack insider information. Yeah. We'll we'll bring somebody on anonymously. You know, like when those people are talking about like secret information on like yeah. uh, TV shows, and they like black yeah. out their face, and they have that deep Muffler voice. Their voice, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Yeah, we meant that. We can get the inside the the wolves locker room, the wolf pack locker room. Love that. Yeah, but yeah, absolutely, it's got to be the worst I've ever seen. Yeah, not ideal. Um. Oh, my bad. Did want to say uh, we've got two divisional races wrapped up. The East is taken care of. We know who our divisional winners are in the East. Uh, and without another, you know, any sort of unforeseen meltdown, the Chicago Wolves are going to not only take the number one seed out East, 
but are going to take the number one seed overall in the AHL. So, congratulations. congratulations. Yeah. Uh, to the Chicago Wolves, to uh, Savage, Aitkins, and Beards, and then well done. You so got throw the it out there and say that's my other affiliation. So, Carolina Hurricanes sitting at the top of the Eastern Conference. Yeah, Carolina Chicago Hurricanes. Chicago Wolves sitting in front in the Eastern Conference. And then Mike yeah. is the slacking team, but we'll get to them in the ECHL. But yeah, yeah honestly, you're... like we go from the Wolves, we talk about the Wolf Pack to the Wolves. These guys like might be the most consistent team this season. Yeah. yeah. Like they're, they, every week is the same. They, they just keep winning. They just win. They just win. They just win. And it wasn't always perfect, right? I mean, like, there's some some six and three weeks. There's some five and four weeks. Did they have but a five here, and four week? Uh, I think early on in the season, I think the 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 they were kind of still shifting through the gears. Um, let's see, we've got a six three and one week. Um, I think that was it. That's, I think that was their, their worst. That's week their worst season. week. Imagine that in your season, your worst week, one week going six, three, and one. That's what I mean yeah. from consistency. Like it's just been yeah. nonstop with these guys. And honestly, I think they, they, I don't want to say they flew under the radar, but I don't think anybody really took full on notice of them because of how Laval started the season. And now they've started to taper off a little bit. I think everybody's like, oh, the Chicago team's been doing it all season. And that's it, right? And consistency is so key. Like you, yeah. you can. You just keep winning games, and somebody has like you know it starts off the season going like nine and nine and zero, oh, eight and one, and then you just keep going, yeah. you know, seven and two, six, yep. six and three, yeah. whatever. Eleven. You keep doing 11, that, right. you're gonna you're gonna work your way right up to the top. Because consistency in this league is so hard, right? And and these guys have done it. And uh, again, I said it on the show before. It's I love it. I love it because when the team's doing that well, you don't have to worry about any call ups, bro. Yeah. Never have to worry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 11 wins on the bounce, best goal differential in the league, and it's not close in that category. Uh, you know, 23-5 and 9 and one goal games, that's ridiculous. This seems like not only a, a regular season juggernaut, but this is a team, if I'm, and we'll get into it in a second, but if I'm sitting and, and pushing for that eight seed in the East, you just got to know that... Uh, you know, the closer in the ninth inning is, is out there warming up, ready to, to send you packing. But that, that one goal game, the one goal game record, I, I kind of mentioned it a little bit last week. That's goalies, man. These goalies have been, have been out. Oh, yeah. Like, they've been so good this season for these guys, right? And they've had great games where they're scoring a lot of goals, but in the games that they're not scoring a lot of goals, the goalies are doing what they need to do to get the wins, man. Still alive and patched, both great goalies. Yeah, and they've they've played almost the same amount of games too. Like it seems like it's, Hey, you're going to get three games this week, six games the next, but like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Good 27, one, six and three from patch 21, seven and five from still alive. I mean, that's, that's, that's ridiculous. I mean, obviously you got to have a good team in front of you, which they obviously do. But, you know, as you said, in those one goal games, they're making the saves that they need to make, um, to, to, you know, just make their team that much better. Yep, yep, yep. RTC, any AHL notes? Um, it is wild to me how unbalanced, I guess you could say, the East is. I mean, the top three teams are just dominating everybody else, and it's not often that you see a team in the 70s still in the playoffs. You know, 78 points, all things considered. Even though it is the AC, it's still, you know, low i would think you know on average you normally see it mid to low 80s at least and they're they're not even there yet um i i don't i do think that they'll hold on to that seed um you know i the griffins can obviously sneak in and everything but um i don't know we'll see yeah so standing wise guys like wolves we just talked about it wolves to the top Rocket with 111 points. Rocket just behind them, 103 in second yep. seed, leading their uh, division. We got the Phantoms. Phantoms staying hot, 99 points in that third seed. Uh, Bruins, 89 points in four. Checkers, 86. 
Islanders uh, 86, the Comets 84, and then we got the Hershey Bears with 78, and the Griffins just sitting outside there with 76. And you could mention the Monsters because these guys have kind of come out of nowhere too. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I feel like the back half of the season for this Cleveland Monsters team has been pretty decent. Or am I out to lunch? No, you're 100% correct. And I think... Um... Let's see who this this management team is. Yeah, I think um, uh, uh, Gavin and Go AHL on that team uh, pretty much did what Razor Gods did last season and not allowed Teal to uh, get on Discord or get on the game at all um, because it's it's they're kind of replicating how Teal did last season and kind of reviving a team from the dead. But this is a little bit of a different situation because they've still got work to do. Um, last season uh, with the Canucks, it was already handled by this time in the season. Um, but yeah, I, I think Cleveland are definitely in with a shout. Uh, let's see. They play Grand Rapid uh, on Sunday. So that'll be a huge game. Uh, they play the Hershey Bears on Monday. Huge. Uh, huge. And then it's they had to play Chicago twice. So the life isn't going to be That's easy tough. for, for Cleveland tough. to get in. Um, so just, but just a lot of their other matches, the first yeah. three weeks, they won eight games total in the first yeah. three weeks. Yeah. They were bottom. That's 27 games and they won eight games. Yeah. So they definitely turned it around. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really interested to see what happens with these guys. Now they do have like some, yeah, definitely like you talked about. You play Chicago twice. That's not the schedule you want if you're fighting for a spot, right? And then you have two big games against teams that are ahead of you. We'll see. I think it's a stretch for them to get in, but I'm not going to count them out yet. Yeah, I'm just looking at the at the Hershey schedule here. Hershey's got a little bit easier. Uh, also has to play Chicago. They have to play uh, the Phantoms as well. Okay. Um, but they've they've got. A fairly easy Sunday night. They start with Rochester, move on to Charlotte, then go to Providence. So eh, not the greatest of night number ones. Uh, Penguins, Wolves, Monsters uh, is is that Monday night. They end the season with Penguins, Comets, Phantoms. So uh, you don't have to, to face the... The machine twice in a week. You only have to face them once, but uh, you got to face the meat grinder in uh, the Lehigh Valley yeah. Phantoms. Yeah. So is, there, the, is there a uh, night? Is there a favorable night season. for these guys? I would say that. Was there a that Monday that night sliding in there? There's a. I mean, I can't say that that Sunday is going to be easy because they got to play Charlotte and Providence, both well ahead of them in the standings. Yeah. Um. Monday night. I mean, they got to play Chicago. I think they can they can get wins over the Penguins, and I th- oh, it really just depends what the line yeah. matching looks like. The only for reason Cleveland. I asked is like if you have like if you have a uh, night that you know what, just throw it away night. You just send out your third line and then go get the wins with your big lines on the the easier nights. But it sounds like there's a dog in in every night, yeah. right? So it's kind of tough. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see what happens with these guys. But yeah, I think uh, I think the East, honestly, guys, I think it's pretty locked up. I think the really it's between the Bears and the Griffins here for that eight seed, like RTC you mentioned, right? Um, and uh, I do truly believe that you know any obviously anything can happen. But round one, I think the top teams should take round one. Unfortunately, yeah, right. Yeah. It's not. It's not fun. <clears throat> Those teams are just just that much better. I think. Yeah, some something I've noticed with a lot of the teams that are not on the bubble but aren't really your top three is just depth. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, you know, a lot of the these teams who are, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of the Bruins, Checkers, the Islanders, Comets, Bears, Griffins. You you know, you, they've got a great first line, a good second line, and then the third line is, hey, if you can grab us some points this week, great. Yeah, but. If you go out and you know zero and three, one and two, you know let the other guys handle it. So yeah, and the and those top three teams are just they've got all nine forwards that will just beat the living hell out of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
yeah, Chicago bodes say it. Chicago depth is top. It is. These guys made some great oh, yeah. too, right? Like bringing in uh, Mondo mentality as well as like Under Armour. Like these guys made some fucking moves to they got one A, one B, one C, bro. They're good. They're good. Um, RTC Western Western uh, standings. You got them in front of you. You want to run us through the Western Conference, maybe? Yeah. Um, this is going to be a lot of fun. I, I'm i still going to root for Goon. All right? I just want to make that clear. 78 points. He's three points back right now. I think Condors are they're as good as dead. Uh, but the Ice Hogs, so 11th, pretty much, you know, the 8th is going to be very, very competitive. Um, again, you know, I'm going to be taking a screenshot of this one. Um Top seeds, I, I again, we could see a huge swing here. Um, obviously, Manitoba clinching and everything, so they're in Dallas. They're only one point back, but in third place. And then it's weird because you have the number two seed with 93 points and the Eagles with 95 in fourth. Don't see that often. Um, pays to be in different divisions, I suppose. But uh, this can get really exciting, these... Uh, these last couple of, you know, games. I mean, you got the Knights with 93 points. The Barracuda are four points back. Um, not having the greatest of weeks, 5-2-3 and three for the Barracuda, but still getting three points in those overtime losses. Overtime losses don't mean dick in the playoffs, but this final week, those could be major points. You know, um, this is going to be awesome to see this finale. Yeah, and like you said, right, like pays off to be in a different conference, but sometimes it doesn't, right? The Silver Knights have a bad week. They just go, they could go from second to, they could they could go to second all the way down to like seventh, really, seventh or, or sixth. It's a big move, right? Like that's that's the only issue. Like It's nice to get that guaranteed second seed, but it also makes for a potential for an upset too, right off the hop. Um, yeah, when I look at the back end here, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, I know, I know. You said you're gonna root for for Goon and the guys, but like, there's a few teams in front of them that are gonna get points too. It's gonna be really tough to to get it done, I think, for those guys. But Gauls 81 points in that eight seed, Firebirds 81 points in the nine seed, and the Ontario Reign with 80 points in the ten spot. I think it's gonna be a sick week to follow these teams along. I think, I think there's a there's a chance for week two. Yeah, I think I think the Ontario Reign. There's a chance they could slide in. They've been playing better hockey. Um. I can't believe Coachella is there. I thought Coachella was a dumpster fire at the beginning of the season. I could be wrong there too, but oh, they they were. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, it's just again though, similar to what I said about the Eastern Conference, the top teams are the top teams, minus your second seed. But I think Texas wins there. Texas, Colorado in that fourth seed, the Manitoba Moose, Scarada. You've been talking the about me- this team for a while. The Manitoba Moose. The Meese. Yeah, these these guys are... I mean, when you talk about making the right moves at the deadline, this team is the epitome of making all of the right moves. And then everything just clicked. I don't know if they've just found the missing cog. The thing is, too, is they didn't do a whole heck of a lot of business right at the deadline. Their deadline day wasn't all that busy. They got it done the week before. Just yeah. so they could keep things going so that they didn't have to stress about it and that they could go into deadline day saying, right, is there anything more we need to do? The answer to that was no. And they've they've just they got hot at the right time. The other thing I want to say is that Colorado is struggling at the wrong time. Two and eight in their last ten. Uh, yeah, they, they they're at risk of of losing home ice advantage. They really are. And what they've been dragged into now is the opportunity to not play against one of these teams who. We kind of mentioned, I think RTC mentioned it earlier, that isn't one of the top teams. Because there's going to be a number five spot that is going to have one of these top teams in it with the way things are going. And 
that four or five series could swing either way. We have no idea yeah. how that's going to end. There's going to be a lot of movement here, I think, in the next, uh, you know, by the end of the, the end of the week this week, yeah. we could be seeing a whole different Western Conference. Yeah. So I'll ask you guys, RTC, starting with you, who do you think gets that final eight seed? Ontario. Ontario. We got an Ontario vote sitting only uh one point out right now. Scarata, who who's getting in that eight seed? I'm gonna go with the incumbent and say San Diego. I think the matchups that they have this coming week are very favorable to them. Um they only have to play one of the top teams once. Now, at the same time, they have two massive, massive, massive games on Tuesday night. Second game against Ontario. Third game, Coachella. They have control of their own destiny if they can take care of things earlier in the week. Uh, they've got nice matchups against Abbotsford, Springfield. Uh, they play Abbotsford twice. Uh, they do play uh, San Jose and Henderson on Monday night as well. Uh, so that's, you know, something they're going to have to watch for and, you know, could disrupt the divisional race between those two. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I think I'm going to have to go with San Diego just simply because of the fact that, you know, they 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 have the matchups and I think they just have the edge in personnel yeah. in order to get it done. Yeah, yeah for sure. So like, um. I think both of you guys are right. I like I like both those picks over Coachella. I think one of those two teams are going to get in before Coachella gets in. Now I know, sorry, Gauls will either hold it or I think Ontario would take it. Yeah. But I think I think if Ontario has good availability, I think that they can get. I think they can steal this. I think they can steal this if they play this smart. I think they can they can steal this. Now they night one they've got Colorado and Texas night one, and they got Rockford. To me, yeah. it sounds shitty. Throw away. Just throw that night away. If you got yeah. the availability to run your two top lines the next two nights, that's what you do. That'd give you your best chance of winning games, and you need every point you can get. Be a real shame if you throw your top line and you get top lined by one of the, both of those teams or one of those two teams. You drop your games and your top line gets loses points. Now, I'm not saying they can't compete. Sure, they can compete, but those teams are at the top for a reason. Yeah, I, I think I'm I'm looking at it the same way you are. I think that Sunday night you just gotta gotta hope for two points. If you get a third, great. Mm-hmm. Um I think maybe even uh, you know, I'm not entirely sure what their lines have been like off the top of my head, but maybe you mismatch some guys to make just a defense line. Hey, we're gonna go out there. We're gonna play Texas. We're gonna win the game one, one nothing. Or hey, you know, we're gonna take Colorado overtime, steal a point there. Maybe we get the a leaky goal and win an overtime two one to collect two points. And then the rest of the week is just firepower. I mean, you got uh, San Jose twice. You got uh, you get Calgary, who are already out. distantly out. Uh, Bakersfield, who aren't officially out, but they may as well be. Um, you know, I, I think... And then you've got San Diego as well. I think this Tuesday, you're going to see all the top lines floating around. I genuinely do. I think for anybody who's on the bubble in this Western Conference, their top line will be out skating on Tuesday. And that is exciting. Yeah. All right, sweet. AHL standings, really, really tight. We're going to see lots of movement, and we'll follow along with it this week for sure. Uh, Going over to the stats page. All right, Shem leading the way still, 73 points. I'm so sorry with 69 points. Jufus up there with 69 points. Comrade Borker. 69 points and Mr. Binks, 67, top five. I think we were all on the sorry train when we talked about this. 
thinking he's going to get it. So he's got another week. He's got a week here to make up some points. He's down four points right now, but Jufus is right there with him from the Chicago Wolves. So anything, anything can happen. It's going to be a fun race right to the end. Now let's take a look at the plus minus here. Same number, minus 50. Your cool minus 50 of the Toronto Marlies and Black and War Cage. Minus 48 of the Calgary Wranglers are your two minus leaders. Uh, so see who gets the most minuses. Maybe we see some forfeits and nothing moves. But I'd love to see them play. Play for the play for the minuses, boys. Play for the minuses. Um, all right. Anything else, AHL, before we move on to the ECHL? Gentlemen. Yeah, no, it's going to be a, a crazy week. You're right. I'm going to be watching those standings on a game to game basis, I think, just to watch how it all plays out. It's going to be nuts. It's going to be a busy week for us. Yeah, I'm going to be staring at that stuff all the time. What do you, RTC? Anything else before we move on? Good luck, everybody, in the hunt. Um, it's going to be an exciting week. Hopefully, uh, I just I pray that whatever outcomes come about, none of it is dictated by forfeit. If there's going to be a team that forfeit, forfeit to the top team that's already locked in the number one seed. I don't give a shit. But don't for, don't forfeit it to one of these teams that are in the hunt. You know, it's just it's going to be tragic. Unfortunately, as much as you say that, and I agree with you more than anything in the world, I un I think it's going to happen. It I sucks. think it will too. It but so bad, bro. It happens every season, right? It's just so sad. But love it. Good yep. message there. Save it for the next one, too, because we're going to need it. We are going to need it as we move to the ECHL, guys. We Maybe let's just kick it off with forfeits. RTC, there were some forfeits that I was upset about, and I know that you caught them, too, and you were kind of like, what the fuck is going on in this league? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, the one that stood out to me um, was Adirondack. Uh, Tuesday night, they forfeited all three games. Obviously, I'm not in manager chat, and even if I was, I can't disclose what I read anyway. But um, with that, Adirondack was on a heater for, you know, a, a while, you know. Uh, they were right behind us in the standings um, and then went 2-5-3 and three this week. Yeah. They played um, Bloomington on the last night, too, on Tuesday. Yep. It was my game to yep. watch. They were competing yep. with well, each other. Forfeited. They forfeited. And they forfeit. That's couldn't, crazy. Couldn't find, so they couldn't dude. find ECU. They couldn't find ECU to play. Which is, it's a fourth, so A fourth seed team tough. can't find an ECU. There's so many fucking it's PCs we have. So tough to believe that. It really is. So the fact but, that they couldn't find an ECU or couldn't find a good ECU. I don't know. I don't know. A ECU. You know, like yeah. if, if, if there is a TC on that team that gave that they were available and there was six of them collectively playing their respective positions, regardless of the skill level or whatever, they should have played. Yeah, yeah I, I think mean... I think they struggled to find it. And guys, I'm telling you, as a manager right now, I might have like active, like maybe like four or five TCs that are just like around when you when you tag. Say yeah. what's up. Luckily I've brought oh, in my... so my rules with TCs is always TCs. trade for guys that I know and I trust. Right. So I get I take right. a lot of flack all season long because guys will be like, oh, you want to do a TC move? And I'm like, yeah, I would, but I don't know anybody on your roster, and so I'm not really interested in making a move. I want guys that I know that I can DM at any time, and they're going to come and play. And I got a few of those guys on my team because that makes me feel comfortable when I need to use an ECU. A big thing that I did when I was managing the C a couple seasons ago was I would, you know, i get offered a TC swap or whatever. I go look those guys up on, on EA's site. Do these guys have like 80 games played or do they have 800 games played? Because if they're always on the video game, there's a good chance that they might be around when I need them. So that's a good way to look at it too. I like yeah. me, I just don't trust anybody. I don't know for the, for that reason. Yeah, right? okay. I don't mind yeah. getting to know new people, but there's a time and a place for that. And when I need an mm -hmm. ECU, I want to know that I got somebody that I can trust somebody that's been on my team before somebody that I've had ECU before. And you know, like this week I needed a left D. So I had two guys lined up Slater Slater rock was ready to play. He had something come up. So I had to fill him in and, and then Huli came and played. 
And then I also had another guy, Jimbo Slice, who played a ton of scouting games for us. He was going to slide in too. So I'm never worried about not getting an ECU, but I would be if I didn't know the people, right? And I, I, it sucks, man. Fourth seed team, right, RTC? They were fourth seed team. And like you said, they've been on a heater and they're forfeiting three games. You don't expect to see that. No. No, it's bad, man. It's bad. But... Guys in the fucking league. That's crazy. I, don't, I know. It's it's insane, buddy. It's insane. Um. Uh, any other notes before we get over the standings? I don't know if you guys had anything else just like that weren't related to standings. No. Dive right into it. Let's get right into it, boys. Tasty. Let's get right into it here. Because I think we're going to talk a little bit about stuff as we go through these standings. And if I look at the Eastern Eastern race in the ECHL right now, the team's been at the top all season long. The team that just keeps getting the players they want. And finally, something bad happens to them. And I, I, I don't actually don't like it. It sucks. I know I said I hated how much these guys get their players, but I hate that they lost a player due to this call-up trickle effect because... I don't know who they're going to call up. Maybe RTC has some inside information, but I know as of last week, Polish did not know who he was going to call up. I love Polish. I love Tanny. I love a bunch of the guys on this team. I love this team. Reading Royals right at the top. They've been there all season long, 106 points, followed by the Norfolk Admirals with 97 points. Finally, we made it respectable to be in that second seed. It was the gifted spot for us for a while there where where we, if we dropped out, we were falling to that sixth seed or fifth seed or something like that. So respectfully, now we are in the second seed with the right amount of points. Uh, right behind the Admirals is the Bison with 97 points as well. Then you got the Railers with 92 points. The Adirondack Thunder, 91. The Greenville Swamp Rabbits, 87. The Everblades, 87. The Ghost Pirates, 87 and then the newfoundland growlers with 85 in the 10 seed nine seed nine seed nine seed not 10 seed this week that six seven eight nine is going to be crazy to the growlers too because they struggled for a long time this season and they have got their shit together shout out to them just real fast before we you know really start ripping this all apart but we show we shout out to them every week well we, but we not, also we've literally been talking about them since they've been in, in the 11th yeah, in spot. a negative manner in a not negative once, manner not once have i said anything negative about them but under other than they're underachieving and don't count them out okay all right that's fair Right. Uh, yeah, say that they sucked, but they have not met expectations all season, and they're still out of the playoffs entering the final week. But they have battled back Big and time. don't want they had to do, you know. Pasta makes a great point in the chat, and I just looked at it. Newfoundland plays all three of those teams above them on Sunday. Yeah, Swamp Rabbits, Ghost Pirates, and Florida. That's a first line day. If one million I, this is the percent easiest first line day. I've ever seen. One million percent. You take, you take two points off of all those teams. You're sat in a playoff spot. You're in by the time you go to bed Saturday or Sunday night. You're in because none of them can yeah. go three and zero that night. Exactly. If you go three and zero, none of them can. Yep. Then they have a Man. really really tough Monday night as they play the Adirondack Thunder, the Reading Royals, and the Bloomington Bison. Then yeah. they have to play. Adirondack again, then the Worcester Railers, and then close it out against the Night Monsters, who are just way out. So, Newfoundland, will yeah. they make it in? Before we look at anything I, else, will Newfoundland make it in? RTC. <laughs> I just got my screenshot for. Oh, let's go. By the way. <laughs> You got them? Yeah? You said yeah? Love it. Yeah. Scrap no growlers, dude. They're streaking. I think this is the rare occasion where the team on the outside looking in has the power. They had the ball is in their court 
and they can make it happen themselves, I think they get in. I I, I genuinely do. I think they're getting hot at the right time. Eight and two in their last ten, six wins on the bounce, and they're taking that momentum just at the right time. And as as you said, if they go three and zero, oh, I I I think it's gonna be hard to take them out of that spot. Now at the same time, if that's a a, a less than perfect night, if that's like a one one and one night, alarm bells. Alarm bells are going off. The klaxon is sirening. The horns are going off because yeah, there's problems in Newfoundland. Maybe. But I'm it not, depends I'm not how those alarms, three teams. Man. It depends how those three teams approach that Sunday night. If they say, "Hey, maybe that's our throwaway night. We need our first line other days of the week." You know, it, it really depends on the matchups. There could be. Uh, any you know any numerous mix of matchups, but if I'm you know uh, Scorsese and company, it's the easiest top. You gotta line. go for it. You gotta go. For you it. gotta you gotta full send it. And I know everybody wants to play their top line Tuesday night. You just can't. You just can't do that here. So I think I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt with the streak they're on, with the run they're having. To get it done, yeah, and they're winning games in in different ways too. I mean, you know, they're you know a six to two win over the Bison uh, in their last game, a, a six a nine to six win against Maine, which isn't all that. Um, but you know, they they beat Utah one nothing, so they can either score a lot of goals, they can score no goals, yeah. but they find ways to win the games. They're a good team. They're a good team. I don't know what happened at the beginning of the season, but there was another yeah. team that was out of it for a while that we continued to say, watch out. Maybe they get it. And if they do, well, it's going to be interesting. But is it too late for the Lions? Too late for the Lions. I think we can pull the plug yeah, on the life support yeah. on that one. That man, the Stingrays. Seven Sorry. points out. Seven points yeah. out the Lions are now. Um... Six three and one in their last ten. Fuck, they made it interesting. And I, I, I don't know, man. I still can't. I just can't do it. I can't say they won't make it. I don't know. I just this team and Sam Squanch is just. Oh my gosh, man. There's they did it last season. They snuck in and then they got the upset in the first round. All I'm looking for is I just do like when we think about Growlers making it in. If they get that seven spot. Not looking forward to that. That's what I'll say. Yeah. Now listen, listen to the Lions schedule this week. Okay. They got Florida night one. So who knows what they're going to throw out, but Florida. Then they have Atlanta, Jacksonville, Tahoe, Maine, Worcester, Tahoe, Bloomington, Adirondack. It's not easy. That is easy. At. Here's Atlanta. The thing, is that... Atlanta should be a win. Jacksonville should be a win. Tahoe should be a win. Maine should be a win. Tahoe should be another win. And I, I, I think they can beat Florida if they get the right line out there, and they'll definitely give a run to, uh, uh, to, to Worcester, depending what line they have out there. Yeah, you're at a six or seven win week, right? So, which is twelve oh, points. And how many points did I say they're out? How many points are they out? They're out ten, or sorry, seven, seven. Fuck, it might be too late. And like, but that's the thing, right? Like, Tahoe is forfeiting games. They forfeited against, you know, my line Tuesday. Uh, they were supposed to be our game three. They forfeit that. So they play them this week. They're playing Maine. Maine, obviously, is... I'm fairly confident that they've been forfeiting games. Like, this is a team that's out of the playoffs that could very well get into the playoffs strictly off of forfeits. Yeah. And, like, that... Fucking sucks. Yeah. But at the same time, at the same time, that would also require the Ghost Pirates to fuck this up. Yeah, I, I think for the Lions to get in, they have to have a perfect week and hope for chaos above them. Mm -hmm. They have to go nine and zero. I think if they slip 
in any of their games, especially that game against Florida, right? Because that's going to be a team that they're they're yeah. battling against. I think that's it. Yeah. Anyways, I just, yeah, I know it looks like it. If it was any other team, I would be like, yeah. But there's just, I just can't, I just can't do it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you'll hear me say it on my Monday Kahuna's Corner, but yeah. I can't do it yet. I can't do it yet. Uh, there's going to be a ton of movement between those, those uh, three teams, four, five teams, maybe four teams. Six, seven, and eight spot are up for grabs. Six, seven, and eight spot are up for grabs right now. All tied at 87 points. Ground was at 85, right? So it's up for grabs. Who knows what's going to happen there? Adirondack Thunder with 91, four points ahead of that next team. They're, they're, they're not going to have the week that they had this week. There's no way. I can guarantee you that. that last week's an off week. That won't happen again. So I think, yeah, I, I think we're kind of... um. Kind of locked. I mean, you you guys locked in the number two seed, obviously. Whoa, whoa. Bison are going to hold, you know, third. Yeah. We're ten uh, points off, but yeah, we'd have to have a monumental collapse, I guess, right? But yeah, yeah. right. <clears throat> That's fair. You guys have locked in your spot. You guys will win the Eastern Conference, right? Because we're what nine points back. So, yeah, yeah I think. Uh, yeah, playoffs will be interesting, man. Playoffs are going to be really, really interesting because these teams that fight for this final spot, they're going to be ready to go come playoff time, too. So nobody can underestimate them. Right? Brutal Tuesday night schedule. What's that, buddy? We have a brutal Tuesday night. We play Bloomington, Adirondack, and Worcester, whatever, the Railers. Washington. Um, Washington. <laughs> yeah, I have no clue. It's Worcester, 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 Worcester. I don't know. Every time I say it on my show, somebody says it some different way. Worcester. Yeah, Worcestershire sauce. Um, <laughs> yeah, Western, yeah. Western Conference. Comets. Yes. Comets still in first place, but the Comets, five, five in their last ten. The comet coming back down to Earth. Ah, uh, I don't know. This we... Tough. We, yeah, they they were they were Monday night hockey, and I believe they. It was against us. Yeah, you would have had to, to wait forever. To, did you actually? Show oh that yeah. Nice. Yeah. Did you put yeah. another game in before that because you could have got a whole game in. Uh, we went to the first two periods of uh, Chicago and Texas. Ooh, that's a fun one. Nice. Yeah. Cool. So that yeah. worked out nicely. Yeah, yeah. The uh, four overtime game. Luckily, yeah, that four thanks, overtime thanks game was their next opponent and our next opponent. So it yeah. worked out perfectly that it lined up for us. Yeah. Like so we were we didn't nobody was waiting for anybody, so that worked out well at least. But but man, there's there's a lot of losses on here to playoff teams. I mean, I'm pretty sure that all of us, maybe two of us, said last week, hey, Comets are locking it in for President's Trophy. Final only, week. Only one of us were allowed to do that, remember? You made the rule. Yeah. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Last week I was drinking. It was a rough week. <laughs> but now, not so much. And I mean, like, the Americans are fucking good. Alan is... They're legit. They're buzzing, man. Like this, they are. They are. They're getting hot just at the right time. And like comets, it'll be really interesting to see how this week goes for them. Because if they keep going the way that they are, it could be a catastrophic round one exit. You know, um, looking at it right now i can't really you know imagine that the rush or even the thunder are going to beat the comets but if you continue to collapse like this anything is possible in this game we all know that yeah allen has a pretty favorable schedule lining up here for the final week too by the way they get quad city cincinnati toledo rapid city Tulsa, Kansas City would be a decent game depending on what line they get. Rapid City again. 
Utah, which is obviously a good game, and then Alaska. So one, yeah. two, the Thunder, three, four, five of their matchups are non-playoff teams. Uh, sorry, what Thunder? Wichita. Wichita. They don't play Wichita. Did I say Wichita? Yeah, I do. No, I, I um, was, I was, I wondered what team you were rifling off the their schedule for. I didn't catch. Oh, that, that was I Allen. That was Allen. Sorry, my apologies. Oh, oh you were Allen. I thought you were. Oh yeah. Fort Wayne. Yeah, dude. I mean, yeah. Quad City's been forfeiting for the last what? Fucking almost three weeks now. Yeah. So wow. that could easily just be an instant dub right there, which is huge. And yeah, they're playing bottom teams. They could play the nine point two five man in Toledo, you know. So you could probably chalk that up as a big. Well, L. I hope they do, and I hope K Morrow gets some revenge on these fucks too, because that Dangle Nation guy's been all over him in the shout box, and I hope Morrow yeah. shows up and plays like pissed off, and I hope he gets the win too. By the way, I do. I do need to stand up here real quick and protect my man Greg. They they only forfeited two games last week. There you go. They actually played the middle game of the three games of the night, so something probably. They've been trying. Went horribly wrong. They've been yeah, trying. No, it, it, like... it feels so bad for them, dude. Those are such great guys over there. They and the just Mallards gotten... were Mallarding last season. They, they were no longer they were. Mallarding. No. Yeah. And I mean, I will say that everybody that they got in bidding, um, at least, yeah, I think everybody um, besides Shifty, they've traded away and, like, you know, yeah. they took care of their boys. Done the right move, if you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, it's a solid group over there. Unfortunate. It is. It is unfortunate. Um, uh, Western Conference. So we talked Comets. We talked Americans. One, two seed. 109, 103. So Americans chasing the Comets for that top spot. Royals up there as well for President's Trophy. Um, Grizzlies been one of the hotter teams. They're in third spot right now. 97. Kalamazoo, 96. The Nailers, 84. Mavericks, 83. Thunder, 81. Rush, 78. The next closest team to them is the 9 seed, 72 points. Fuel, who have to make up 6 points next week if they want to try to get in, which is not going to be easy to do, I don't think. I will say that Kalamazoo for a while was actually like the top team. Right. Yeah. Um, so not that it's a disappointing you know, season by any means for those guys, but I, I definitely thought that they would be a little higher, I guess you, you know, in the standings um, than they are. Yep. But still, 96 points is not a fucking bad season at all. Uh, I, I think it's hysterical that there's a 12 point gap between fourth and fifth place in the Western Conference. That's crazy. Pretty wild. Pretty wild. I mean, all eight teams that are in right now are probably going to make it. I would put like a solid ninety-five percent are on there. Yep, I agree. Um, and to have that much of a gap between fourth and fifth place is wild. The Nailers are streaking though, and they've looked really good. Um, seven two and one this last week. Uh, they're they're back in true form, no doubt. But um, I, I just I, I don't know why that just fascinates me so much. Twelve points between fourth and fifth. Yeah, it's a lot, Three. man. Yeah, it's, and it's, thirty-one it's points between first and eighth. Sheesh. Yeah, it's crazy, right? And like I know we talked a little bit about it last week, but like the Eastern Conference, your eight seed has eighty-seven points. Right, like where they would fall into in this Western Conference is it's just crazy, right? Like it's just it's just crazy. I think. And again, again, you know, we talk about another seventy point team coming in at the eighth seed. Yeah, they'll have they'll have eighty something by the end. Though it will be fine. Well, yeah, yeah, no doubt. But no, it's good. So, so you, is any any pushback there, Scrata? Do you think anyone? Do you think Indy falls in or flies in, or do we think those are your eight? teams no i think uh it's it's too much of a hill to climb for for indy to to get and i think rapid city got this but i think uh yeah it's gonna be congrats on making the playoffs enjoy your off season yeah 
So the, the one note that I had that I wanted to bring up was the Orlando Solar Bears. Orlando, they sold their team. Orlando sits right now in 13th with 69 points in the Eastern Conference. They're not going to make it anywhere. They're 8-2-0 in their last 10. They are playing the spoiler. They are stealing points away from playoff teams. Last week, they beat the Comets. They beat Indy, who was fighting for a spot. They beat Kalamazoo. Um, and they beat Greenville. All those teams fighting for their fighting for playoff spots or something and you're allowing the 13 seed and they're eight and two no they're just out here finishing the season strong and screwing up people's playoff dreams and i love it i am here for it that's what you need out of these lower seed teams right hey we're not gonna make playoffs guys we suck we're not we're not having a great season Let's go fuck somebody else's up. Let's go screw somebody else's day up, right? Have that mentality instead of being miserable about like how your season's going. Go screw somebody's season up. Go piss somebody off by beating them, right? Like that's the mentality you need to have when you're one of those lower seed teams. And I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, what do you guys think? Do you guys think Alan can can uh can catch the comments? I think you're asking a lot, but Fort Wayne need to get it going. They need to, points. to shift back into gear again. Sunday and doesn't get two wins, it, they're gonna catch them. I don't. Yeah. I don't even care what line. They need to get back on track and fast. Yeah. I don't care yeah. what line plays for them. They need two wins on Sunday. If I look at their schedule, Fort Wayne will hold the top spot. And that's what I think. They play Alaska, Idaho, Wichita, Toledo, yeah. Indy, Cincinnati, Toledo, Wheeling, and Iowa. Yeah, their schedule is very. Wheeling game very is going to be a toss up. Which one? The Wheeling game is going to be a toss up. Sure. So you think- Toledo twice. I mean, if they play Toledo's top line, that could be a toss up. If they go, if they go seven. If they go seven and uh, two, they're in. If they go six and three, they're in. Yeah. Or they they lock I mean, in that top spot. If they go five and five again, they go five and five again. Well, what's the separation, right? What is it again? Sorry, it was uh six, six points. Six points. Even five and right. five might not might might be enough. To be honest with you, that's ten, yeah. ten more points. Uh, right, because even yeah. if they go nine and zero oh and you go five and five, that's what only. Well, uh, yeah, points. you go, you go, you go five and four, and then. Say they go nine and zero. That's a, a, a what? An eight four, point four swing. games, eight points, right? So that's that's what you would need to have. That would be the best. Yeah. They'd have to go nine and zero. Allen pretty much has to go nine and zero. Yeah. To give themselves even a shot, and that's still not guaranteed. E, yeah. Because if they go if yeah. they go six and three, they're locked in. And I don't think if you're Allen, you, that's like the goal. I think no. even. Yeah, you know, I, I think they're they would be comfortable playing Wichita in the yeah. first round or oh, whoever yeah. whoever. They're having a great season, set. man. There's nothing to be yeah, yeah nothing to be upset about about yeah. second spot, especially when you earn it, right? Yeah. So cool. Um, scoring scoring race. Now, I know our our leading point getter last week had a tough week this week, but the and he dropped. He lost his top spot for points. Scotty falls the second in points now with 84. RLX now leads the way of the Allen Americans with 89 points. Scotty 84, LG McDonald 83, Disaster Piece 80, and then Tanny Boy with 76. So it's really, I think, between RLX, Scotty, and I'm going to say McDonald because McDonald's line just continues to score millions of goals every night they play. So, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, so that's our, that's our, um, it's our scoring race there. Yeah. 50 goals for LG McDonald. Scrub Hunter. Yeah. Anyways, uh, plus minus. God, sorry. Got to be somebody on the main Mariners, right? Got to be. How about their whole team? First One to, to eight. 
is main Mariners players. Leading the way is Jayco. Save this man. Somebody save this man next season. He's That's... better than all of this. Jayco. All of these numbers. Jayco minus 59. Brian That's Mack minus 58. No blood minus 51. Large right there. What's that, buddy? I said that is an oof size large right there. Poor Jayco. Is... Something, something interesting I'm seeing. Uh, Helix is a minus 44, but he's got 47 points. Allows a lot of goals against, I guess, eh? I guess. Either he doesn't play defense or just the team around him. Maybe it's a lot of power play goals, awful. maybe, too. Power play points, maybe. Uh, it's hard to say. Yeah. He's played 81 minutes on the power play. Or no, that's puck yeah, position. I mean, that's puck position. Sorry. Who knows? Yeah. All I know is with J. Co. having the season he's having, do we see him come back into management next season? Mm. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe he gets his Prince R- Prince Albert Raiders boys back together. Maybe. It'd be interesting. Yeah. It'd be motivation what too. The league does. It's motivation yeah. too, right? Like, woo, yeah. tough goal this season. All right. Anything else, at ECHO? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, I I think it's gonna be. I'm I'm very interested to see what Allen Adirondack and Worcestershire Sauce do with RLX Scotty and McDonald heading into the final week. Worcestershire Sauce. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love it. I love uh, it. You know, when you have those guys, are you going to, you know, and then we we circle back to the Austin Matthews thing. Are we going to let these guys go for the points, or are you going to try to grind wins out of them and lock in seeding? I'm going for wins, bro. I don't give a shit about any personal I know you and don't, objectives. but we don't <laughs> own any of these guys. No, right? I'm just saying. It's just it's dumb to me. Yeah, it is, but we I mean, some people want the team to be happy. We want the team to be ready to go come playoff time. Yeah. Anyways, we'll see. We'll see what the Leafs can do. All right, boys. Um, NC Double A. They will start their playoffs this week as well. Now, the only thing that was extremely surprising to me, and I've just got to go find it again. I had it up, and then I didn't. Okay. On the last night of the. The last night of the um, the week, I guess you could say, of the season, the playoffs were, were, were brought up on how the playoffs were going to work. Now, if I looked at the NCAA standings, it looked like we were going to have an eight teams, eight teams, and eight teams from each conference, right? Because we added another league or another conference partway through because there were so many players. Because that's where those lines were drawn, right? At the eight. And only in the last night... It was determined that that's not how the playoffs were going to go. 24 teams are going to make it. So I think that's the same, right? 8, 16, 24. So all 24 teams are going to make it. But the seedings are done by point percentage and not by points. So they're combining everybody. And it's going to be point percentage because those teams that came added in later have less games. So instead of keeping them in their conferences, it looks like they're going to combine them. Top three seeds will be the division winners. They're going to call them division winners. The remaining top, remaining five for top eight will be seeded by point percentage. One to eight. Receive first round by. I literally am. I have no clue how this is going to work. Right. So it made it super one, three, and it's not easy when it's like one. You only have three conferences. It's not easy to make a nice playoff season. Right. So so one through eight getting a first round by. Everybody else is having to play an opening series, and it'll go nine against twenty four, ten against twenty three. Right. That's how it's going to go. Right. That, that's just we're why? just combining all of them together. But anyways, like, I guess like my biggest thing is like. Something had to be done. Something had to be communicated because there's no way you could run a proper playoffs, right? Unless you took like the last, like the top, you run your conferences one through eight, 
and then the top three play each other in a round robin, and then like the top two teams just play each other for the finals or something like that. Yeah. But you combined everybody. Nobody expected that. So I, I I don't know how it impacts teams at all, but they should have uh, brought back the season forty three CHL marbles race. Play okay. play semi play. Uh... Everybody gets a marble at the end for that fourth for that fourth team to make it. Yeah, in. I don't, yeah, who yeah. cares? Yeah, hundred percent. Like just like and and yeah, like Pinnell talking is like first time getting a buy. Yeah, buys you don't want to buy and wait around. And we had that re- we had that a few couple seasons ago in the playoffs. There was yeah. buys. What, what was that from? I forget. It was CHL, I believe. And then it was like yeah. waited around, and then teams like then you got knocked out. And it's just like okay, that sucks. So, I'm gonna have to go back and look at that because I I remember having a buy at one point but I, was that season 44 season 42 uh, yeah i don't remember hold on I remember teams had to wait at. i think that was the season you went for a run isn't it yeah it was that was the season you guys went for yeah. a rep yeah we made it all the way well, not quite all the way yeah yeah there was a yep yeah, season 44 What a weird season. So weird, man. So weird. Anyways, yeah. I just thought, like, you know what? It's, it is what it is. It kind of works, right? Like, the, the format kind of works, whatever. But to be communicated that on the last night, it's just kind of kind of weird. It just kind of sucks. It might not impact it anybody, but it, nonetheless, right? Like, just... Anyways. All right. We've talked about every single league. We talked about the NHL. We've got playoffs coming up for the CHL NCAA this week. The following week, the other leagues will start their playoffs. And at the same time, the NHL IRL will be starting their playoffs starting Saturday. Cannot wait to see what happens there. Um, but hey, boys, we got another long episode here. But we'll cut it up. We'll cut this one up and uh, release it as a couple videos onto the YouTube channel. People in the chat, thanks for hanging out. Good time. Um, Skirata, RTC, as always. Love hanging out with you guys. This late night stuff. Rather be doing this than anything else I would have been doing. Um, final week, Skirata. How you feeling? Ready to, for it to be over? Ready to reset for next season or what? Yeah, let's uh, bring bring on the next season. And you know, switch it up a little and have a little bit of fun. So yeah, Self- selfishly, I love the idea of you not being in playoffs so that we get like a lot of game calling because last season we got thousand. none. Right, like because you guys went deep, so so I love that. And then um, on the opposite side of the spectrum, we've got RTC sitting at the top of the standings after being traded to the top team. RTC, how are you feeling about your last week, buddy? Good. You ready to rock? Yeah. RTC, yeah. if there was one team that could win the Kelly Cup that was not your team, who would it be? That you would want to win, not st- statistically win. Want to win? Yeah. That's tough. Well, let's get it out, buddy. The nailers. The who? The Nailers. And that's the end of our show. Take care, everybody.